Man, I really feel like watching a cartoon from my childhood. Let's see what we've got. Um, ooh, Anastasia. Very good film, but too girly for me. What about Prince of Egypt? Nah, too biblical. What about, ooh, a classic. Toy Story. Nah, too scary. Oh, I know. The Land Before Time. It's about a group of dinosaurs that go on adventures. What's not to love? Alright, let's watch it. Alright, let's watch a nice children's film. Hey, this is a children's film! Hey guys, Lightane here, and I'm going through a nostalgic cartoon to try and find out is it truly worth it? And today, I'm going to be looking at The Land Before Time. The Land Before Time is a movie made in 1988 by a man named Don Bluth. In this film, we follow Littlefoot, a young, long neck dinosaur that has to find the Great Valley because due to climate change, food and water is becoming scarce. The Great Valley, however, has all of that in abundance. On the way, a giant earthquake, which the movie calls an earth shake, happens, and Littlefoot is separated from his herd and heads to the Great Valley on his own. He soon finds some companions, Sarah, a three-horn, Ducky, a swimmer, Petrie, a flyer, and Spike, a... Uh, they don't know what he is. They form a friendship but also have fights while still being followed by the evil Sharp Tooth. First off, this movie is dark. Forgive my bastardization of this paraphrasing of Don Bluth, but he once said that if you have a happy beginning and a happy end, you can put whatever you want in the middle and children will be okay with that. And it is true. Some of the best children's films that I can think of are ones that have adult elements mixed into the children's ones and they don't treat the children like idiots. Films like The Lion King which has death and famine, or Toy Story which is all about neglect and figuring out who you are, they are movies that will stand the test of time and they are the ones that I will always remember, much like The Land Before Time. With that said, why would I remember this? Well, to spoil the story, during the Earthshake, Littlefoot's mother is killed fighting Sharptooth, and Littlefoot watches her die, and doesn't truly understand the loss because he is a child. He then starts to hear and see her all over the place, and it is truly heartbreaking. One scene that always gets to me is when he sees his shadow on a wall and it is huge, and he thinks it's his mother. He runs at it shouting, Mother? 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 And as he gets closer, the shadow gets smaller, and he starts licking the rock, thinking that it's her, only to realize that she's gone. Brings a tear to my eye every single time. How is that appropriate for children? This movie has a G rating, but at the same time, I thank God for someone that someone had the balls to do this in a movie. The other major adult theme in this film is prejudice. All of the characters in the film would never have become friends because each species pretty much sticks to their own. But being children, they don't really understand that. Them interacting with each other and displaying misunderstandings and stereotypes is what makes a lot of tension in the film. But all of the characters feel real and all have growth throughout the film. They all have funny moments and sad moments and have clear motivations. I don't particularly like Sarah though because she is a bit of a bitch, but I can sympathise with her. The animation in this film is great with really good main characters and backdrops. My main complaint, however, is that the latter half of the film, the colours are very brown and dull compared to the start, but, as with their journey, it is to show that the world isn't as bright and colourful as we would like it to be. The action in this film when being chased by Sharptooth is hectic and intense, and you really feel the danger that the heroes are in. They also work together in order to stop him terrorising them at the end, and everybody helps out, but it doesn't feel like forced. I used to watch this film a lot as a kid, and it scared me, and it made me sad but in the best possible way. I grew to love each of the main characters and what they went through because it had a happy ending and my child brain could accept it. Thanks, Don Bluth. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> this movie was so good in acclaim that it spawned 13 sequels. That's right, 13. The latest film, number 14 in the series, only came out a few months before this episode aired and they will probably keep making them in the future. Now, I haven't seen most of them, but they differ quite substantially from the original. The sequels are all musicals and have brighter colours and very little adult themes, if any at all. 
They are more typical children's films with a simpler story and morale with childish jokes thrown in. The few that I have seen aren't the worst, but they don't hold a candle to the original at all. It's to look around for something to chew. Exactly. Feeding myself is very, very tricky because you see I'm ridiculously picky. Eggs. With that, I would give this film a very high worth it. It might be a little bit of a nostalgic thing and a little bit of a bias thing because I simply adored this film as a child even though it was really, really scary and really, really sad at the same time. I loved it so much that I own all of the, the DVDs so far and I even have random toys of The Land Before Time. One thing that can put a lot of people off though is the animation in this film is not as clean and colourful as a Disney film. But please do not let that deter you. This film is great. If you watch it, you'll get hit with all the feels right in your heart. So don't forget to like and subscribe or anything down in the comments below if you did enjoy this film or not. If you found it scary or sad, because I know my sister and I did, but I don't know, maybe you've just like hardened up and you've eaten lots of cement and you didn't think this film was that bad. Or maybe just because I'm nostalgic, it makes it worse. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.